All right, these are the notes for um, 5 7 inverse trig functions integration. And I start out with a review, and I say that uh, if we have the derivative of arc sine of g of x dx, we can look that as that derivative is g prime of x over the square root of 1 minus g of x squared. So the example I give is we're going to figure out the derivative if y equals the arc sine of x squared over 5 what would that be? Well, dy dx can be looked as, first of all, g of x is going to be x squared over 5, and g prime of x is going to be 2x over 5. So that would be the derivative. So this derivative is g prime of x, which is 2x over 5 over the square root of 1 minus x squared over 5 squared. So that gives me 2x over 5 over the square root of 1 minus x squared to the fourth, uh, excuse me, the 25th. And so I'm going to simplify that. And this top can be 2x will be on top. Out in front here, since this 5 is in the denominator, it's going to be in the denominator of this. And I'm going to get a common denominator inside the radical, which is 25. So 1 is 25 over 25. So can I write it? This is 25 minus x to the fourth over the square root of 25. And you can see here I got 25 over 25, which is 1. And then what I can do is I can take the square root of 25 and get 2x over, here's my 5, here's my square root of 25 minus x to the fourth, and the square root of 25 is 5 here, so I have this 5. Well, what's going to happen are these two 5s are going to simplify. And in simplest form, I'm going to have 2x over the square root of 25 minus x to the fourth. Well, let's examine that a little closer. Here's 2x. Here's the square root, and what this is, is 5 squared minus 2x squared. Excuse me, that's incorrect. Let me uh, fix that. Let me undo that. I wrote it down. I'm thinking too fast. There. It's x squared squared there that's better so the derivative of x squared oops is this 2x oops I don't know why that's moving and this 5 here is the denominator of this fraction up top this fraction right here which I'm gonna call a so this is a generic form in other words if I, let me clear the screen, another way to define the derivative of the arc sine of g of x is to simply say, in simplest form, it's going to be g prime of x, like we've always had, once we identify what g of x is, over the square root 
of a squared minus g of x squared. And that a is simply the denominator that's in this g. All right, and I'll give you some examples. My first example is y equals the arc sine of x cubed over 16. And so I'm going to define g of x as being x cubed and a as being 16. That means g prime of x is going to be 3x squared. So it's simply that numerator is g of x. So that means that my derivative, my dy dx, I guess I'll write it here, is going to be g prime of x, that 3x squared, times the square root of a squared, so 16 squared, minus g of x, or 3x squared. Oh, excuse me. I wrote the derivative. I apologize. Again, I'm going too fast. Minus x cubed squared. So I'm going to have 3x squared over the square root 16 squared is 256 minus x to the sixth. So that's another form of the derivative. Let me do another one. And this one is y equals the arc sine of 3x to the fifth and if I take a look here this is equal to the arc sine of 3x to the fifth over 1 so that means my g of x is equal to 3x to the fifth. And my g prime of x is equal to 15x to the fourth. And my a is equal to 1. So if I'm going to figure out my derivative, my dy dx, I have my derivative, which is 15x to the fourth over the square root of 1 squared minus 3x to the fifth squared, which means that's 15x to the fourth over the square root of 1 minus, now I'm squaring 3, which is 9, and squaring x to the 5th means I'm going to multiply these exponents. I'm going to get x to the 10th. Now, another way to look at that, this is one way, another way to look at that is I could say write g of x, or let me back up here, I could say 3x to the 5th is the same as x to the 5th divided by 1 -third, divided by the reciprocal of 3. So that means gx would be x to the 5th, g prime of x would be 5x to the 4th, a would equal 1 -third. And if I did that this way, my derivative 
would be 5x to the fourth over 1 third squared minus x to the fifth squared, which would give me 5x to the fourth over the square root of 1 ninth minus x to the tenth, which is the same as 5x to the fourth over the square root of 1 minus the common denominator is 9, so I have 9x to the tenth over 9, which is the same as 5x to the fourth over the square root of 1 minus 9x to the tenth. I'm giving myself a little space here. But the square root of this, this of this 9 the denominator is going to be 1 third, which means I am multiplying by the reciprocal, reciprocal, which is 3, which means I get 15x to the fourth over the square root of 1 minus 9x to the tenth. Okay? So this is the general form. Again, I'm going to clear, clear this screen. And I have three general forms of this. And if you look in your notes, it's going to be um, I'm going to give three integration processes. And if you take a look, it's going to be, it looks like this, du over the square root of a squared minus u squared d. Uh, let me undo that, which is another way to write this. I'll write it in several forms. 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du is equal to the arc sine of u over a plus c. So what we're doing is we're taking the antiderivatives, and we want to take whatever we get into this form, and we can figure out the antiderivative. So in this, here's the next one. du over a squared plus u squared is equal to 1 over a squared plus u squared du. And that's going to be 1 over a times the arc tangent of u over a plus c. And the last one is du over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared which I'm going to rewrite as 1 over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared du is equal to 1 over a times the arc secant of the absolute value of u divided by a plus c. Now, these allow us to be able to come up with antiderivatives for more complex integrals. That's one of the purposes. u is my function. a is a constant. That's what you need to remember. Also, if you notice, there isn't arc sine, excuse me, there isn't arc cosine, arc cotangent, or arc cosecant, and the reason why, and here's the reason why, and this is the bottom of the notes, oops, sorry, since 
the derivatives of the co-functions and by, by co-functions I mean sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. That's what I mean by co-functions. They start out with the word, the part, the prefix co. The derivatives of the co-functions are opposites that's what I showed you yesterday, only one pair is used. One, excuse me, one per pair is used. So we don't worry about the negative because that negative can be involved in the front here. And that will show up when we take the antiderivative. So let's take a look uh, at some problems. And I'm going to start here and continue on with the problems next that have the actual usage of these antiderivatives.